we're passionate about design at, at Frost Collective and we're passionate about, um, uh, I guess, general optimism and, and designing uh, great ideas. And, you know, it's really a, a real honor to have Fabian join us um, when he does. <laughs> he was there with me. We were side by side having um, a chat prior to us having to reboot. So he is coming back. Uh, Luke is just going to make sure that that happens very shortly. It gives me a real opportunity to uh, do a bit of an intro about Fabian Baron. Um, I mean, he's been working for 30 years and probably a bit like me too, um, but in a very different sector. And he's been driving the industry forward with fresh thinking and iconic creative t creativity for some of the world's most celebrated fashion and luxury brands. The guy designs anything. When you look at his work and the broadness and variety of his, of his work is quite incredible. Typography, design, product, glasses, furniture, photography, film, uh, et cetera. And just prolific body of work. Um, he had a book that came out recently called Fabian Barron Works. Um, came out at the end of last year. 400 pages. Quite incredible. In fact, I have the book here. It's just huge, thick, and full of incredible inspiration. It weighs the same weight as one of my French Bulldogs, uh, about 15 kilos, so it's quite something. Um, he's obviously designed a lot of publications as well. Uh, French Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Italian Vogue, Interview Magazine, uh, etc. And he's also sculptured uh, images of, of many brands, Calvin Klein, Burberry, Giorgio Armani, and Coach, for example. And what we're going to do is, is Fabian's idea was that we talk through uh, his book. He's basically sent me a spread from all 400 pages of the book, and I'm going to flick through it with him um, once he comes on, and we will discuss a, a variety of projects. And his inspiration, um, his, his kind of passions, uh, I'm really kind of keen to understand what makes him tick, you know, why he does what he does, um, what's his inspiration. And how he's kind of amassed such an incredible body of work uh, and the you know, quality that is unbelievable. Hey, Fabian, you there now? Yeah. Is uh, that working? Thank God you are there. Oh, my God. This was like some... Wow. Okay. So we're, we're Zoom's both... not bad. Z I know. Zoom I know. is not bad. Told you about Zoom. <laughs> next time, next time it will be Zoom, my friend. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. Should we just wait for our hearts to calm down? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, how long can I keep this going without you being there? Um, I've done an intro, Fabian, just so you know. Uh, and again, okay. welcome, we know, welcome. We know who I am. That's good. <laughs> we know who you are. Um, uh, obviously, you're an icon in the design world. Um, and we're, again, very privileged to have you on today. Uh, you're in New York. Uh, whereabouts are you? No, I'm sure I'm outside New York. I'm in the Hamptons. So oh, I'm very cool. lucky, like considering the situation there is in the city, which is really nasty, actually. Um, mm. I feel quite privileged to be out here, you know, in the countryside, in my house, in peace, being able to go outside, being able to walk around, take a walk on the beach. You know, it's yeah. quite nice. So I'm not, I'm not going to complain. It's quite, it's quite beautiful. And so what's it like in, in New York and what's it like in your, in your business? Is well, it, I've, is been, it, uh... I've been there a couple of days. I mean, like for most people that I work with, you know, like all, all the people at, at the studio, like, you know, and we, we get together sometime on Zoom, you know, like we could do like this kind of like uh, get together and like uh, everybody seems to be fine in taking this quite well and, and, and they're working and we manage to work remotely quite well which mm -hmm. at first I was a little bit like, oh, that's going to be hard. But, you know, we've managed to pull out quite big presentation all on Zoom and all on, you know, working like this, like someone here, someone there, and just like using Zoom and presentations like that. And it's been, it's been quite good. It's been quite oh, good. And good. the level of the work hasn't gone down one bit, oh, which is always good. nice because you would imagine like you need to cut corners, you need to do things, a, you know, a different way. But no, like we just like... Uh, you know, keep the level, which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, but like you, you know, the spirit in the people in the office that you know we're about fifty all together. It's quite, yeah. it's, it's, 
everybody feels quite positive. I mean, we tried, you know, the situation here is not like other countries where the healthcare system is really solid. And when, you know, like unemployment, you really like, you know, like in Europe, like, you know, they really take care of people. They like the states have, you know, like for example, in France, they took care of 85% of everybody's salaries. This is not the way it's working here. So it's more wow. complicated. So we had to, you know, it was complicated to get like some kind of like aid from the, the state. So there's a lot of like unemployment right now. It's 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 horrible. I mean, like it's a system that, you know, of survival here. Like, you know, if, you know, if you people, like if you fit, you make it. If you're not fit, you don't make it. It's tough. It's a, it's a tough uh, equation. So, but I was really protective because I like all my people and like, we were able to keep the staff like so far we kept you know you know like all the people i love at the office i mean that you know we still we still a unit you know which is which is yeah, yeah. great and we get together like you know once in a while like like brian my assistant is is organizing this this great cocktail parties and like you know like meets and like you know where everybody's chatting together it's kind of fun it's fun it's been good. oh that's cool is that virtual cocktail parties yeah basically yeah, yeah, yeah. well it's so important isn't the culture of a business um to keep everyone together and keep everybody positive we were lucky well, in that moments it, like this in moments like this like that's what you want you want you want positive this thing's going to go away ultimately things will go back to some kind of normal, maybe a different normal for a while, and then a new normal that's going to be, you know, a little bit different. But, like, ultimately, you know, people forget, you know, when 9-11 happened, you know, like, at first, like, you you couldn't tell someone, like, do you want to buy a space or you want to move in Tribeca? I mean, nobody would move there. Like, everybody was, like, deserting the city. Nobody wanted to leave downtown and, you know, and, mm -hmm. like, you know, everybody, everybody forgot, you know, like there's tourists everywhere when you go by the Wall Street Center. So, you know, like it's human nature to forget, to, to forget and to move on and to, you know, rebuild and do and, like, you know, so I think like you have to think positive about these things. You have to, you know, it's a it's a moment you need to go through. And then after that, it goes to something yeah, else. Absolutely. Next. I think the, the it's it's interesting. We're just gonna we're gonna gonna put the slides up in a second. Um, the the book that you created uh, just the end of last year, which is incredible. I held it up earlier. I hold it up again. Um, it's the, a beautiful four hundred page book. Uh, as I said, it's kind of the weight of one of my French bulldogs. Um, <laughs> it's incredibly heavy. Yeah, um, I mean that's the thing. The thing. The book is like okay. It was it was nice to do a big book, but like the the the. The drawback to that is like it wears a lot and it's a little bit like oh you know that's that's the drawback but mm. it's beautiful paper is well printed oh, and, and it's and it's you know it's and it's some of the work put in a way that is different than what you would expect so i mix things that people have never seen before some of yeah. my you know some of my artwork that i've never been published mixed yeah. with like some commercial work, some like advertising work, some film work, some, you know, drawing, some, so it's all, it's all a mix. It's all a thought process in a way, like the way, in a way, like, you know, someone told me, oh, it's a little bit like a, a self portrait because like, you know, it seems like you put all what you're about on the page, like how your mind mm. processes information and how, and what you do with it and how you'd like to put it together. So, um, it's it's you know it's chaotic and at the same time there's a lot of order to it so you and you and i are not um we have similar glasses and we have similar hairdos yeah. um <laughs> and um but you and i you know, we're not so far apart in terms of age but i think that when i was at art college back in england um i was i saw harper's bazaar and i was the only guy in my in design school that was um buying um women's magazines and um, you know just looking through them and I never read them <laughs> I just fell in love with them in terms of the spreads and the typography and the, the quality of the photography etc it was absolutely I've never seen anything like that before in my life um, and you know just, you've, been, you've, you've been very visible through um, all the brands that you've worked with over the years Calvin Klein 
um, you know, Interview Magazine. Uh, I think actually, yeah, I, I, I'm going to stop you there because I think like I've been very visible. I don't know for maybe the few that know, like you know, what a person like me does. But I think I made the brand more visible. I made the people I was working for more visible. You know, like uh, Bazaar yeah, yeah, was more yeah. visible. Calvin Klein was more visible. I don't think it was really about me. I think it was more about like what I was doing for these brands. And of course, well, like this, like professionals that knew I was part of it. But you know, I, I, I don't think it was about me per se. You know, in in a certain way. <laughs> yeah, I think I think you're being very humble, of course, but you've been a very integral part of of the of those brands. Uh, of those publications, etc. But how did that, how did it kick off? Because obviously you're from France, Paris originally, right? And um, yeah, you had a yeah, similar background. I was born and raised in Paris. Uh, studied in Paris for not so long. I uh, went to art school at uh, l'école uh, des arts appliqués, mm -hmm. and uh, I left quite rapidly, like a year and change. I left. I kind of knew what I wanted to do even when I started that school. Um, I was so happy to go to art school though, because like I felt like, you know, um, I didn't really find myself before that, before going to that school, because that, you know, I, I was not like the best at school, let's say, like, you know, I was not like, you know, so, so genius. Uh, and then I got to art school and I kind of like was a little bit more successful. So I did enjoy that. But in my head, I already knew like, I want to do this. I want to do this. Ah. What, what, one day I, I go to New York, one day I do this, right. da, da, da. you know, I had a little bit of a plan in my head, some kind of okay. like structure and like a, a path to follow. I guess it was helpful because it gives you a sense of direction, it gives you a goal to go to and it gives you like a, a little bit like, okay, I'm going to go do that. Yeah. And um, I left school rapidly because I understood like, okay, that school is great. I wish I'd go to school now, actually, because now <laughs> I think my mind is ready to learn things you know, in a different way, like in a, in a more like, you know, like kind of like a enrich your knowledge, you know, which is very different than being told to learn something, you know, it's a very different approach. But anyway, um, at, at the time I figured like, you know, it's, it's, I felt it was a bit of waste of my time since I knew what I wanted. I said like, I need to put the energy into where I want to go. And so like, you know, uh, that's going to be, you know, the direction I'm going to take. So and back then at school, I was already taking pictures. I was like doing graphics, and and I've been taught at that school to different, you know, mediums. You know, like we were doing pottery, we we're doing tapestry, mm. we were doing photography, we we're doing drawings, we we're doing paintings, we we're doing like all different like applied art, including graphics. Wow. Um, but my my goal said I want to be an art director. I want to work for magazines. Is that because you know? your dad was an art, art director? My dad. Sorry? Mm. I was going to say, because your dad was an art director. He must have yeah, influenced I wanted, your... you know, I just, you know, it's, I was that kid that wanted to impress his dad, I guess. Mm -hmm. That needed to impress his dad and say, like, you know, I was okay. So I wanted to be a little bit like him. So yeah. I wanted to become, you know, this, this art director. And then the thing, I guess, took off and I, I you know, I, Passion got in the way, mm -hmm. like love for the for the craft, love for the you know, for the for being able to create, just yep. you know, took me on you know on the path on the journey that I've been on for the past forty years. I started working when I was seventeen, wow. so I've been at it for a while. Yeah, that's young. Wow. So I had I had my my successes and but I had my failures. Don't worry. I had, you know like I had very good like you know the four hundred page book. You know could have been much much bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was at one stage. And went too heavy by then. Like you know you need like a you know a yeah car just a, around. a wheelbarrow or something a wheelbarrow let's, or something like that. Let's talk about um because I think I'm right in saying that. Your first role was in magazines, right? Was it French Vogue? No, the first magazine I worked for was actually, I, I worked for a magazine in France. I worked for okay. sport magazine, like newspaper. Okay. I worked right, at right. Liberation, which was the French like newspaper, like the news, you know, the left. Actually, like uh, Jean-Paul Sartre started that uh, newspaper. 
And my mm. father was working at it, and I, and I worked a little bit at it. I was going coming on weekends, helping him and doing things there, you know, and like doing photo stats. I don't know if you remember that photo yeah, stats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. like, you know, um, Free computers. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like ev everything was still uh, metal, you know, like back then, and like you know, like, uh, and then he got into like a photo. The type was on the a bromure, what they call a bromure, which was a sheet of like film. Yeah, with the bromide. Type of, you know, rolled on and used to do like, you know, glue everything by hand and yeah, you yeah. know, do everything by hand. So the, the job that we were doing, uh, I think back then was a little bit more crafty. You know, mm -hmm. that, there was yeah. a part of it that was about craft. And I think that thing is good. You know, like, mm. I think like, you know, the computer, I mean, changed everything and made everything much easier, give you access to, allowed you to do things you couldn't do before. But the crafty side, I have to say, gives you like a, a love for textures, a love for the form and an understanding how difficult it is to do something, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I like that. And it's something, there's something classic and kind of like old fashioned about the idea of craft, you know? Uh, it's not unlike, you know, like if you look at luxury brands, you know, they have crafty things like Hermes, the way they do leathers, what the other one mm -hmm. don't do it because they have a certain craft. So I think mm -hmm. I, I believe in craft. I believe mm -hmm. it's good to know, to know yeah. some kind of craft, to be able to say like, you know, yeah, I don't have a computer, it doesn't matter, I can do it another way. You know, if you give me two, three things and I, and I can do it another way. It's nice. It's a nice, it's a nice feeling to be able to do things with your hands, you know, like the, the relationship between the vision and the physical ability to move your hands and create that vision through your, your hands. I think it's, it's a good thing. I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's like being a musician, like musicians mm -hmm. that, that's what they do, you know, I yeah. mean, like, uh, except their hands are really exceptional. Um, do, you, do you think, do you think that if you um, were starting out today, you know, you know, we, we, we both started prior to the computers coming along and it's influenced us um, in, in, in massively, I think, in the way that we work. Um, how do you think you would have turned out if, you, if you'd been in, you know, born in a generation? Where, you know, I have you, no idea. Out, so. I have no idea. I started having computers, I think, when I was like about like 30, you know, after Italian Vogue. Italian Vogue was done all, you know, m manually, like on the Xerox machine. Yeah, yeah. Designed on the Xerox machine. You know, that's, no. that's what it was like. I would like blow up the type, like sizes you couldn't believe at the time. And I would like, you know, like make a Xerox. The type was all messed up because, you know, like it was coming from a size big like that. And I yeah. would like cut, recut every letter with my, with my you know, uh, exacto knife. Yeah, you yeah. know, so it was really like clean. So that's the way yeah. I was doing it. I was doing it like by hand, like very manually. And then after that, when, you know, I came back to New York, computer was starting to show up and I started to do when the first time I went to interview magazine started to do things with computer but I was like a little bit of computer a little bit of Xerox so you know a mixture of everything so it was a bit messy mm -hmm. and it was really when Bazaar came about that mm -hmm. you know I did it all on the computer and it was it oh. was nice it was a nice feeling not to have to cut and to move things by hand, you know, yeah. even though it's, it's something quite organic when you do things by hand, you know, like it's, there's a, there's a beauty. To, I, I love that. I mean, like, I still can, like, you, even today, like, you know, at, at the office often, you know, they make printouts and I'm just like ripping it, get the scissors into it, like, you know, like da, 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 and change mm -hmm. the thing a little bit more like that, you know, yeah. rather than going on the computer and fixing it. Yeah. What and, have we got uh, on the screen? What have we got on the screen, Fabian? What do we have on the screen? We have um, two um, uh, type thing, a, a type thing that was done. That was type research that I, I was, you know, designing type and started to deform the letters. And in the background, that's on the left page. And in the background, started to do like I did. I did a lot of like computer drawing, so that's really not end, end work. And like mm -hmm. kind of like you know deforming shapes and shades of colors and mixing them all together, and then on the right side you have a picture I've done with uh, Guido Paolo, you know the hairdresser, that was a, a shot I, I did for um, Interview magazine, and what 
you know, like the book and what was interesting is at the end, and I go back to the way of the way you think about things and the mm -hmm. way my mind functions. It's, that, it's I think I'm, I have obsessions. I have things mm -hmm. I get into. And if you compare the graphics on the left and the picture on the right, there's a lot of things, there's commonality there. there there's a lot of things that are similar about yeah. like there's a strictness about it. There's a chaos about it. There's a very organized, you know, perfectly minimal way of looking at things. There's some kind of like a spiky perfection, you know, and mm -hmm. and the matching. So I, I think I was able to translate my way of thinking about things in different mediums quite easily. And I think mm -hmm. that because I never wanted to give myself a real sticker that, you know, like people have tried to say, like, oh, you is, you, is the art director the guy that does the graphics? If this is the guy that does the big letters, okay? Mm -hmm. that I yeah. heard that one quite a few times. And I said, okay, mm -hmm. fine, whatever you think. But I was intrigued by photography. You know, I'm very curious. I always was intrigued by photography. So, my, you know, I developed my photography skills. I developed my film um you know director skills i developed my architectural skills i developed you know my art skill my my work that i feel very attached to on a personal level um and i never wanted to be bound to just one way of talking to people because i, f I always felt like you know like the job that we do is we really kind of like communicating ideas and I always thought like, you, you know, like there's many ways you can do that. And like, why, you know, narrow your vision to graphic design. So mm -hmm. I did packaging, I did furniture, I did, you know, three dimensional um, sculptures. I, I did, you know, photography, I did film, I did installations, I did store design. I did, well, I did many, many things, many things because I looked at it in a very enthusiastic way. Like every time I found a medium that I don't know, I'm very curious. I lift everything. I want to know the way it works. I want to understand like the mechanics of it. I want to understand like, how do you start? How do you middle it? How do you finish it? How do you polish it? How do you present it? You know, I need to, um, to, uh, to know everything and kind of like understand it very well. And I could, it's like learning a language. I compare it often to learning a language, like, you know, like, you know, if you have something to say that you said in this language or this language, the meaning is the same, but yeah. you know, it's a different language. So you need to learn the vocabulary to be at ease and fluent with that vocabulary. Then you can express your ideas the same way and at the same level. So that's what I wanted for myself. And that's why I felt, I f and I feel like, you know, like when I, I think the human nature is more, it, it's, it's more about that. It's more about like you as a person. I think every human being is capable of doing, you know, like expressing themselves in different ways. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I think we, I think we've been put too much in a box. Yeah, yeah I agree. You're, you're, the, you're the guy that does the graphic. You're the guy that takes the picture. You're the guy that does that. He's the photographer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need a name, a sticker, and organize in the box. That's the guy that does the color, that does the pictures like this, in this color, da, 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 with this type of girl, blah, 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 you know, and why? You know, and I think, like, people then, they content themselves in that environment maybe because they like to have some kind of structure or they like to have, you know, to be recognized for something. But mm. the, 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 the shame somewhere is like that people, you know, like at brands, companies don't let people be more creative in, yeah, a, in, in general. So, so I like to do different things. I, I really I, enjoy that. And I like, I like, and what was interesting in this book, I tried to do many times and mm. I tried to do it in a chronological order. And, you know, and it, it felt boring. I felt like, like I'm not saying anything. I'm yeah. not saying really who I am and it doesn't represent what I am. And when I see what I see now on the screen, I feel much, much, much closer to wh what I, I am. You know, like uh, this is feels more me, you know, like that it is taking a picture of an iceberg or a pile of trash or a woman in selling dress. You know, like there's a relationship between all these things and they fit together and they say something. 
And it's the message that I'm intrigued by and what I read out of it as, you know, like what, what is the third element? When I see this, I think about things. And that's what I'm intrigued by. I'm intrigued by the things I don't see on the page. How, how do you know when it's right? I mean, obviously you look at that and you just go, oh my God, that's absolutely stunning. And, and I understand the pairing of those images and the logic for that. Um, but how do you know when it is right? I mean, do you go through, you must go through it, it tons just reads of right. options. It just, it just feels like, you know, there's a, there's, it says something else. If it doesn't say something else than what you see there, it's not right to me. I mean, that's the way I, I, I behave, you know, like if, if by association I look at things and like I get a feeling, an emotion, if it doesn't bring the, those elements, I'm not intrigued. It's not enough. It's just like, okay, it's just like a um, remote or like it doesn't give me enough. And I need that it goes further, like a little bit like it creates a third eye. I mean, this is a wonderful juxtaposition, isn't it? I mean, they're two separate projects. But I guess, did, I mean, did the icebergs influence the perfume bottle? No, I don't think so. I think, I think no, no, I, I really don't think so. I think they're two different ideas, but they're the mm. same idea. Do you know what I mean? They're the same. It's my mind that works like that. You know, I, mm. I discovered that. It took me a long time. But I discovered that I'm intrigued by, I'm obsessed by certain things. And I repeat those things in different mediums. So, you, you say, know, like what he's saying was one thing on the left. It's saying almost the same thing in a different language on the right. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's interesting. Like, why am I intrigued by that? And I, I you know, like it's it's just like I, I don't know. I don't really know. But like, I'm I'm just like, you know, like kind of like, I get I get really like influenced by it. Mm. So and, and you have a you have a studio me, of as I said about fifty people. Um, are you still involved yes. in every, every single project that goes through the business? Um. Pretty much, wow. pretty, pretty much in, in at different levels, you know, but, you know, and not everything, 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 but, but, you know, like, yes, yes. And I have to mm -hmm. say, like, the, the, the thing that I'm enjoying the most is um, working with my team is that they don't think like me. So what, what, what I'm looking at is something I would not have come up with. So, and I get really, really intrigued by that. And I oh, really like, cool. you know, like it, it took me a long time to get to the team I have today. It took mm -hmm. me forever. Like, you know, like we have the company for, uh, I don't know, 25, like 25, almost mm -hmm. 30, 20, yeah, more than 25, like something like that. Yeah. And it took me a good 20 years to get where I am with my team. Like I, mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, like the, the you know, like, for so many years, I had people come in, they want to work with you, they show the work, and like, they have a good, you know, and then they do mini me, you know, mm. and I'm not, I'm not intrigued by that. I don't, mm. you know, because like, I'm going to do it better, you know, and the people I have now, they do what they're good at, and they do it really well, and they do things I cannot do. So, you know, the office is really strong. Because, you know, like, instead of, like, I'm, I'm here, you know, they, they, their, their force make our force much stronger rather exactly. than having a lot of, like, little Fabians around, you know, doing a version of my work. It takes a it's long time like to get that. it right, doesn't it? So maybe, maybe what we have in common, all of us, is the philosophy and the way we work. Like, there's a way that I work that I think... I've carried through the team. Like, you know, I really want people to be have their own voice, their own independence, and be able to say what they have to say. So like being able to communicate, being able to be part of a team and be able not to be political inside the office and to mm -hmm. be able to to work with the team as if it was me, I think is the most important thing to me. And I want everyone to be happy and to be like, you know, enjoying what they do. And the minute, like, the job becomes a job, you don't do a good job. Mm. You know, I want it to be play. And when people play, that's when they're really good. Yeah, yeah. It can take because a long when time. when I play, that's when I'm really good as well. 
So I believe yeah. that applies to most people. I mean, running a business can be really tough, right? I mean, it, it's, it takes it a is. long time to get it right. It is. Um, it is. So well done. Thank you. Um, let's talk about furniture design, because I presume those are your, a couple of your chairs there. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. These these were like um, leather seats. There's, they're very thin. Um, they're, they're metal structure covered with leather. So like they're covered with like this really beautiful raw leather. And it was playing with the positive, negative, like chairs were full and empty, you know. But I wanted to make them the, uh, the, the thinnest, you know, like uh, metal chair. And that is like structure. Hmm? I think this is kind of a testament to what you're saying before. Like a lot of people get put into, uh, into a bucket or a badge. This is what that person does. Um, in a way, yeah. I think I think it's a combination of people actually feeling probably, um, you know, comfort in that zone as well. But you've managed to be, a, I guess, a generalist and be able to go, I can design anything. I can design any any medium, uh, any, you know, physical, any industry, etc. You can tackle anything, right? I think if you have a point of view, you, that point of view is the point of view. And that's, and that's what, you know, you do. And it's your voice and your voice, you know, you can like uh, work in many different ways. And when you have something to say, you just say it. Like in, and, you know, maybe I've been very, very re redundant. Maybe if it would have been only a graphic designer, I would have become extremely redundant with what I had to say, because I would have had only one medium to express my, m myself. But if you look at what you have on the on like this piece of furniture there, is it different than the page opener from a magazine when you have one single letter? Not that much. No. You know that simplicity, or and the impact of the of the the object for what it is, and that's it. And like the boom, the 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 kind of like the directness about it, I think is mm. is very similar. Yeah. It's very similar I mean, to some of my images that are very, very basic and simple. So um, I'm saying the how, same thing. I'm repeating myself. How do you think fashion, obviously being involved in fashion ma magazines originally, um, that opened up a whole new world to you, didn't it, I guess, in terms of that world of well, fashion? But, but I got intrigued by fashion really, really early because I felt like, you know, I was in love with photography. And when I grew up, when I was about like six, 15, 16, my dad being an art director, of course, at French Vogue, at Twain, at Nova, at the house, you know. And I was seeing like the Helmut Newton, the Guy Bourdin, like mm. photographers like that all the time. And like looking at the pictures, having a camera myself, of course, I got intrigued by the photography. We had Zoom as well. Remember that magazine we called Zoom? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, like, you know, like, so they, you had the worker Jean Paul Good, like people like that. So, I, I would, you know, these, these were my heroes of the early work of Paolo Roversi, uh, et cetera. Like, you know, like, I, got, I fell in love with the photography part of fashion at first. Mm. Right? Then I fell in love with the clothes. I, right. I, and, after, and after that, I fell in love, after falling in love with the clothes, I fell in love with style. And our style shape, you know, certain ways in our world. Our style, you know, like just move things in different ways in our society. So it's been a step back. It's been like, you know, a building block about my love and my passion about fashion. So I got, I got really intrigued by that. It's very, you know, but I'm also intrigued with architecture in the same way. I'm like in love with architecture. I've, I've built houses just, you know, with like an architect like John Parson, just for the project, which, which is crazy when you think about it. You know, like I go like, you know, like I would, I know I would never get, someone would never give me the, the you know, like the possibility of building something, a building like a building for someone. Well, mm -hmm. I did with John Parson and I, for my own house. So wow. just because of the, pro the project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, process, the is the process similar, do you think, with every, uh, just the different mediums, like that, that goddamn beautiful chair right there? That was a, um, a, a chair that I designed for uh, Capellini, actually. A long mm. chair. Beautiful. Was it a one-off or was it, was it a, did they go into production? 
Now you went to production, but there were very few were produced. Very few were produced. But it was a nice chair. Yeah, it was a nice chair. Oops. Um, I have to slide. Um, and these these are obviously your images on the right, right? Is the, your photography? Yes, the right right and left are my photography, and left okay. is also like the design. Like it's the it's my pictures, but it's also um, you know like a, um, a like a it was live sculpture. It's like from my love from architecture and minimal art. Like we build these these structures, this empty structure in the in the desert on the flat bed. There's more of these pictures like somewhere later probably. Oh, okay. um, I don't know what's because it's not in. It's in your logical order. Oh, is this down in the Hamptons? Yeah. This particular one, uh, maybe. Yes, it is probably. Probably Tell me about that, because 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 you you go down there really early in the morning and take these stunning photographs. I, I follow you on Instagram and see every day you seem to be posting images uh, like this. Yeah. So so basically, um, you know, like to tell you, like how obsessed I get with things, like this <laughs> this idea of like, you know, like in the 1982 when I moved to New York, you know, I had time for myself. I didn't speak English very well. And I was so excited, you know, discovering New York, discovering everything. And I got into, you know, the photography and discovering American photographers, you know, like mm. Joel Merrill Ritz, like, you know, like uh, Elliot Porter, like all these photographers that were doing at the time, you know, like uh, we call these people who were called the new colorists back. And they, and it's it stemmed out of the the, the mid eight the, the mid 70s. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stephen Shaw, all these photographers, like in the seventies, that William Christian Berry, like blah blah blah, you know, like this. There's about like 30, 30 of them, uh, and I was really intrigued by the color photography. And a lot of them were shooting with large, large format camera, like eight by ten camera. So I decided, you know, to buy an eight by ten camera, an old uh, Deardorff camera, which is a wood camera, and the the, the shit film is eight by ten, so it's really large, it's really big, and. I, I started to take these seascapes, you know, in a very uh, mechanical way, dividing, you know, the screen in two, two equal parts, half water, half sky. I uh, started, my first one was in 1983, early 1983. I'm still taking those pictures today. It's the same fucking picture over <laughs> and over and over and over. Maybe like the tech, the technique has changed so ever slightly here and there. I'm not with an eight by ten, an eight by ten camera anymore, but it's still the same process. I go, I take the camera, I study, and I make extremely long exposures of the sea uh, in the morning, different lighting, different times of day, and different places. And I've done a book on that, like about ten years ago. And you know, and then I thought I was done. That's it. I'm done with this. It's great. It's finished like, you know, 20 years of it. And uh, I'm still doing it. I was there Amazing. this morning. Is it like yeah. like a meditation for you? Is it, what is it? It, is, it, is a little bit. it becomes like, you know, like there's something relaxing about it. There's something about mm. like going back to something very basic, something that you know and that you don't know. That's why even on Instagram. So with the iPhone, I take the picture, the the picture that is, the test picture of the real picture because mm. the real picture looks obviously different than the iPhone uh, because the yeah. quality is different, the print is different, the exposure is different, the way it's crop is different. And with my iPhone in the midtime, it's like doing a Polaroid, right? And that's what I post on my Instagram. Um, so it's a very, very di uh, different picture, but um, yes, it's, it's, it's pretty much like a, a way for me to go back to something I know very well. Yeah, and that yeah. is that is the same, but it's yeah. not. It's ne but it's never the same. Yeah. So it's always like it's trying to learn something that you know you will never learn because it's always changing anyway. It's a, it's a moment that you try to grab, and then another moment, and another moment, and all, and the fact actually that it is a long exposure, you behave about it in a very different way. You look at the you 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 taking time, you know, like I'm not taking. A picture that is exactly this moment i'm taking a lapse of time sometimes five minutes ten minutes long exposures so i'm taking a, a mom a big moment 
and I tried to translate that on on a, on a, as a print. So I've done I don't know like thousands of those, and I have thousands yeah. in the archive, and you know, yeah. um, I've done a book of it, and uh, I'm in this new series of, of it all the time. Oh, and I still do it because I, I I like the repetition. I like the repetition of trying to say like tomorrow I'm gonna take a better one. Tomorrow the picture is going to be better than today. Tomorrow is mm -hmm. going to be better, and it's not. And maybe it is, or you know. And just like, what did I learn? What extra thing did I learn? And I think that goes back to craft, probably. That go back to this idea of like the guy, you know, like when they build Notre Dame in Paris and they chisel the thing like forever, you know, to put it there. And it, there's this idea like maybe you building something that is long lasting, that mm -hmm. has like some value. Uh, with time, like in a in a, in a larger way, I don't know what, exactly what it means. But what I'm learning from it is like, you know, like you can always make it better. You can always improve. You can always learn more, and you can always, you know, like. I guess you can learn more, and I'm curious. Nice. So I, I, I yeah. you know, I wake up and I say, look at the sky, and like it's all black, and I say, oh, like this couple of clouds. I feel like this couple of clouds. oh, it's exciting. Let me go. And I go, and it's not exciting. And I go, oh no, it's not exciting. Oh, no. Let's take a picture anyway. Let's try. Let's see. Maybe we learn something. And then it changes. And then oh, so something comes, and you start seeing things differently. And that, and before you know, you spend an hour and a half. Mm. That's cool. It's You're doing it for yourself too, right? It's interesting, and I like it. It's it's great. It empties my mm. mind. I think only about what I'm doing, and uh, I'm yeah. just focusing on something very simple: water, sky. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Let's talk about um, Calvin Klein. My God, what an iconic brand you created there. Well, Calvin Klein's always been like iconic, like with me or without me. You know, I mean, I, I think like you know, I participated in in the, in the in in the brand in in a way that you know, of course, I added some 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 things and and worked with Calvin in a way that you know we felt really in tune. Uh, with what he wanted to say and what I wanted to say, and we were like really kind of like good partners in that way. You know, we were yeah. like really, really like he was pushing the right button. He was challenging me the right way, and I think I was challenging him back the right way with what I was proposing. And you know, we had a mutual respect and a mutual understanding of the medium we were playing with like that it is advertising film packaging like fragrances like you know i think like calvin is someone that really has a great understanding of you know media and medium and how to you know how to um push the right buttons and how to be noticed and how to you know make things yeah. stick and give it a give it like um you know like a, a feeding popular culture with a slant i, yeah, I don't I'm, know if it's if it's clear enough but um, i'm just i'm just i'm just going to keep flicking because I, I mean we've got a lot of amazing work to i want to try to find the calvin klein um projects um that's coming up um but i do think it it, it was it wasn't like turn the perfume felt like that was iconic at the time it was one of the first ck1 yeah, yeah. ck1 yeah. was like actually it's my everywhere son. My second fragrance I designed. My first fragrance was um, was Isemiyake for uh, Lodice. It was called mm. Lodice at the first. Beautiful. And the second one was was uh, CK One. And at the time it was the '90s and it was like the grunge movement and everything. It was everything back to real and like Elmud Lang was really big and you know really cool and fashion was about like you know nothing nothingness and you know a pair of jeans and like something and the kids were very like you know about their own personality and wanting to be like themselves and like, mm -hmm. and be very real. And, mm -hmm. uh, I've, and you know, that utility, utilitarian movement was starting, you know, with the young people and in the music, you know, it was, it was very like, um, it was very raw. It was very much, this is what it is. And it's not much more. And it's, it was not pretentious in any way. And I felt like yeah. really like, you know, like to put a fragrance out there that felt, you know, like when we spoke with Calvin, he's, you know, he wanted to, you know, like uh, 
uh, we said, he said, like, do you think it'd be good to do like, a, you know, like a, a gender, like, you know, a male, female fragrance? Mm. I said, well, if there's a moment to do this, it's now. Because like, yeah. I felt, you know, it was the 90s, the, you know, like, and Kate Moss was really like the girl of that moment, right? Um, it felt, it felt like it was, it was the right time to do that, you know, and, uh, you know, like the way the bottle was designed, I said, like, you know, like, I think the bottle should be on, not, not designed, it should be on design, it should be something very normal, that, and the gesture should go against the pretension, pre the pretension of fragrance, like, you know, the gold, the decoration, the, everything mm. needs to be simple, it shouldn't look like a flask like a bottle and the cap should be like a Perrier cap, like a Coca-Cola yeah. bottle, so like it yeah, feels yeah. Like a, just normal and you can clip it off and like use it almost like a unpretentious and very yeah. real. And, and the packaging has like a packaging that is very like sustainable, uh, that has no glue that, you know, like, so basically, you know, like every fragrance uh, packaging has a glossy box on the outside there's this mm -hmm. called the e-flute on the inside, which is the, the thing to protect the bottle so it doesn't mm -hmm. crash. And I said, let's use only the interior, so the outside of the packaging as the packaging. And that's what we did. And we printed directly on the e-flute and we trashed the cello wrapping. We trashed the outer packaging and we didn't have any glue on it because we wanted to be kind of like, a, you know, like environmentally friendly. And it was really, really early. So, yeah. and, um, it got really successful. And, and all the test, when, the, when the project was tested, the funny part is it was a disaster at the test. Really? The, a disaster. Didn't do well at all when they were testing it. Because wow. they were testing it to the normal people that, that, that uh -huh. buy fragrance. Yeah. And at first, the normal people that buy fragrance didn't buy CK1 until they saw all the young people wearing it. And it, it became a big deal. And then people, they buy because they want to be part of it. And that's what happened. Did the, did the, did the perfume overtake the un underwear? Or is it, is it, I mean, they must have sold billions of bottles of perfume. It was the biggest fragrance launch at the time, ever, mm. in the history of fragrances. Wow. Biggest, number one in the world. I hope you got paid in shares. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish um, I would have been paid, paid, paid in shares for many jobs. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. We'll start doing it now, for goodness sakes. No, but you know um, what? I mean, the money's good. The money's one thing, but like, that's not what I'm in this game. You know, I'm not, I'm not in it for the money. I'm mm. in it because I love it and because I really enjoy what I do. And mm. I've surrounded myself with people at my office that love what they do. They, yeah. they have a calling, I think, to, they really enjoy what they're doing. And, you know, like it's, I, I, I feel great. I feel really proud when I'm next to them and I hear what they say and I hear mm -hmm. the ideas and I see like how much energy they have and I see yeah. like how they fight me, which I love, which I adore when they don't agree with me and they push me somewhere else. And I love that because I, I feel okay. They, they're here for the right reasons. You know, oh, they're not good. here to believe me. They're not here yep. to do a job because it's well paid or they, they need for the same reason, the same reason I'm in it. And it's great. It's a great feeling. I wish we could talk for two hours. You, okay. Have you got a bit more time? We'll keep this going. Sure. If you have. Yeah, I have a little bit more time. Yeah. It's not like, I've, I've, listen, it's not like I have a meeting. We've got, um, <laughs> we've got a lot of I've up in this house for 70 something days. I can stay <laughs> Next, <laughs> next half hour, if you want, I don't care. <laughs> okay, all right. It's gone dark behind you now. The The sun's gone down. Yes, um, it's uh, nighttime, yeah. And we, we're starting to get questions coming through. There's a lot of questions. I mean, I'll, we'll have to just pick and choose a few of them. Um, but one thing I just want to talk first about is, presume that spreads Harper's Bazaar, right? This is Bazaar, yes. This is Harper's I mean, that, Bazaar. I mean, that just was like, you look at that, it's, it's timeless still today, isn't it? Just look at that and just go, that could have been done today. That was done, what, was that 20 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Like, simple things last. I think it's so simple. How did, 
how did it work? I mean, what, I mean, it looks easy when you, when you see it like that. Um, was the pho- photograph of uh, Kate Moss supplied? Did you art direct that shoot? Um, did you decide yeah, to put, mean, go you there like versus the headline? Person shoot with like Kate and David Sims was doing it. David Sims, Kate Moss, good mix, good things. You know, the pictures came back. We loved the, the pictures and I looked at that picture and I was thinking like, damn, 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 damn. There's so much energy there. Mm. And I've asked, you know, like, you know, I came up with the headline, actually. Because and I felt like that was the right thing to, you know, like I talked to the editor, so like, what, what the story is about? What is it? What is it fashion-wise that you have to say? You know, it's things that you wear outside, like, you like you know, like that uh, kind of quick and, you know, like energy is a big part of it. And, blah, blah, blah. and I wanted something with, you know, the shortest word possible. And I think mm. she, it looks like she says it. Go yeah, like yeah. She goes like this, and like it looks like you know. I like the idea of an image and the graphics reinforcing the image, and the the picture reinforcing the graphics, and the words reinforcing the whole thing. So you can read something in many, 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 many ways, but the whole thing stays extremely simple and direct. So you. How get, long did that take? How long did that take to put together? I don't know, like ten minutes. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Ten minutes, but it's last forever. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, like, I'm quite quick when I do those things, to be honest. I mean, the yeah. ma- the mag- magazine magazine trains you to be to be resourceful with what you have, mm-hmm. to be able to do things with no money, to be able to do things really quickly, and mm-hmm. you know, like tuck, 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 like this, and and it, it trains you. It's like, you know, like um, a little bit like, um, you know, you do a sprint a little bit every morning. It's like gymnastic. So you become, like, as, as you work, as you, as, as you work a lot and you have to produce a lot and you get more jobs and you get more and more and more and you continue delivering is because you, ha- you, you, you become like an athlete. Yeah. You know, like those guys that can run like, like marathon, like, you know, every four days, like how do they do it? I couldn't even like run like around the corner miles, you know what I mean? Like, and how do yeah. they do it? It's because they trained. I'm a trend. I'm very trained at all these things. I'm yeah. super trained. So and like, obviously you know, with, like gymnastic with, the, day. with with a magazine, uh, you, you had an incredible editor too. I mean, it, 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 it's hard to work on a, on a publication if you don't have an amazing editor and a great uh, relationship. Absolutely for sure. Absolutely for sure. And I think so, that was maybe my luck was that I was very, very picky with who I'm work, whom I mm. work with for magazines. I knew yeah. magazines were a voice. I knew magazines were a way to express yourself that were quite personal in some ways, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, and recognizable. And I wanted to associate myself with people that I respected that done, and that I understood and that felt similar to my point of view. Yeah. I didn't want it to be, you know, attached to a thing where it's going to be problems and everything. And I, I, I passed on really big jobs for that, mm. you know. And, you know, like I, I did this thing like that happened, like really like after I left, um, in um, when was that? I was at New York Woman. That was the first time in New York that I had my own magazine, and I was working with photographers like Peter Lindbergh. I had him like do his first pictures in New York, actually, for a magazine in New York. Then he was picked up by American Vogue. Um, but I, you know, like I, I did that magazine, and then I got a phone call from Alex Lieberman, you know, which I knew because I was before at Condé Nast, and Alex Lieberman was the head of Condé Nast America at the time. And um, he was really like the guy, you know. So um, he called me up and he proposed to me to do American Vogue. I said, yeah, do you want to come to American Vogue? I think you should come to American Vogue. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, and I looked at American Vogue at the time and it was Grace Mirabella that was at American Vogue. And I thought like, "Mm, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure it's a good idea to be at American Vogue and and uh, I passed the job. I didn't. I didn't take the job. I refused the job. 
And because I didn't believe that Grace Mirabella at the time was in the right place with the magazine. And I didn't think that I would be able to do the right thing for American Vogue with Grace Mirabella at the time. So I passed that. Then like a week later, I get a phone call from French Vogue. And, um, and they told me like, oh, you know, like, you know, we really like what you do in New York. Like you want to come back and live in Paris and do French Vogue. And I, I was panicked, you know, like, what do you mean? Like I've been like in America for like three, four years. And like, you know, now like, you want me to go back? I felt like a failure going backwards. You know, like mm -hmm. I, I was feeling like I was just like getting on with New York. I didn't want it to go back to, to France and live in mm -hmm. France and deal with French and la da da and all the French thing. I didn't want that in my life. So therefore I turned down the job. And I was like, you know, after, after that, I was like, oh my God, I was like, I'm really stupid. Like my girlfriend at the time told me like, are you sure you didn't make a mistake here? Like you turned down two. <laughs> oh. And I started to panic. I really started to panic. And, wow, maybe I'm really stupid. Like why? Maybe I'm too pretentious. Like what's wrong with me? Like, you know. And then guess what? Like a week later, Franca Sozzani called me. And Franca Sozzani, I knew and I respected and I loved what she was doing. And she felt like someone, and she said like, I'm taking over Italian Vogue. Would you like to do it with me? Wow. And that's all she said. And I said, and I didn't even question it. I said, of course I want to do it. When do we start? I didn't even question wow. like going to Italy, what it was going to be. I just said, yes, I took the job because, and also like Franca, to be honest, she was the right editor at the time. She was the, the editor. Mm. And, you know, like, so I started Italian Vogue and not even a month into Italian Vogue, Grace Mirabella left American Vogue and then a winter stepped in. Mm. So that was a good move. <laughs> so I, 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 like, and that this kind of thing happened quite a few times, you know, like taking on the job with this editor and not that editor, like the way mm. the thing happened as well. You know, I think like I was, I was very picky, very picky who I was going to work with, very picky with the team at Bazaar. It was like, you know, like when we formed the team, I really wanted Paul Cavaco, Tony Goodman. I wanted these people to work at the magazine. I wanted these photographers. And, you know, like I just like worked so hard to get the right team because like it's not about one person. It's about if you don't have a good team, forget it. Like you don't have it. It's not it's not happening. It's not going to no. happen. You're not going to be able to turn it. You can, I can do like all the best graphics you want, but if you don't have yeah. a great picture next to it, if you don't have an Avedon picture next to it, if you don't have a David Sims pictures or like, or you make your own photographers into like something, mm -hmm. you have nothing. You have, or you have half a thing. So what's the point? Well, we're gonna, we got a question here, uh, Fab, um, from, from the audience, and it's probably from a designer. It says, how do you get trust of clients, boss? to do the work you have done? I'm probably a very good salesman as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like I think I'm extremely enthusiastic. So when I explain things about the, the, the job, like the, the, you know, I think I'm quite convincing, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And also I think we deliver, you know, yeah. and yeah, yeah. when you see the presentation we make today, like I remember the presentation I used to make myself when I was alone in the studio and everything. And now mm -hmm. I would present things and the way we present stuff today. Mm -hmm. I mean, like the level, I get impressed. There's mm -hmm. some presentation, like we have an idea or we're going to do it like this, we're going to do it like that. The presentation, are like it's mesmerizing, like the level is, is really high. So I think like the client, they get like, you know, wow, this is good. Yeah. You know, I'm impressed yeah. by it. Some of it I don't even touch. And like the work they do at the office is incredible. That's not, another question here is how do you divide your time between business and design? I mean, do you divide the two I don't divide or are they one? To me, it's all a big blur. You know, it's all like I'm trying to create. 
not, you know, like I, I don't look at this, oh, this is a job, this is a this. I, I'm passionate, enthusiastic and passionate, and I put it all. Whatever I'm doing at the moment, I put everything into that. Mm. And I think that's why I'm able to do, I think, many different things because I'm so focused on one thing. So I have a, a genius assistant. It's like mm -hmm. he, my, you know, he does everything for me. He pulls me from this job into that job, into that job. He drags me from place to place to this. This is it. Now, that's it. Now, enough with this. You have to go do this. Oh, I forgot we have to do this. So is that Brian? I'm totally, totally a mess in terms of scheduling, in terms of, uh, you know, like make, knowing what I have to do on that day. You know, my assistant keeps me on track and he pulls me in front of the thing and, and I do the thing. And then he drags yeah. me up and put me to the next thing. And I don't think about the next thing. But why, at the, when I'm at the next thing, I think only about that. He definitely protects you. You're talking, you're talking about Brian, right? I'm talking about Brian, yes. It's, I'm it's talking Brian, about Brian. Brian and definitely Brian. protects you. Brian is he, exceptional. He protects you from people like me. <laughs> yeah. I know, it, it was so hard to get through. Uh, last last year, year before, I think it was when I was in New York. I um I, uh, well, I reached, reached out to you. Amazing conversation, and you know, like, and you said, like, oh, I'd love to do a podcast a podcast with you. And I said, we should have had that conversation. I remember oh, when we had a good really good conversation. Yeah. Um. Well, we're doing it now. It's just slightly different. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. But, I don't remember uh, what you said, but I remember it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um. Another question here. Um. Any going trends, any trends coming up you're following at the moment or was that driving inspiration from? Oh, drawing. Thanks, Mac. <laughs> Mac's drawing of drawing was hard to read. Um, do you get, do you hear that question? I need, like you what, need to repeat that then. Yeah. What trends, what trends are coming up that you're potentially following or um, taking inspiration from? Well, I think that, you know, in the same token that, you know, like before things were very crafty and then the computer came on, you know, and then digital came on. I think we're on the verge of things changing again into, you know, something maybe even more futuristic than, than where we are at the moment. Like, you know, like I see, uh, you know, with, with what happened, I think like, you know, like fashion, fashion is, is, is moving along. And moving in a way that maybe, you know, the idea of presenting fashion is going to change. Like, we're going to have to present fashion differently. Like, you know, um, and also, like, um, I have a feeling, like, you know, like, with the, um, with the force behind Instagram and how, like, everybody have been communicating on that platform. Uh, that's and probably Brian saying your dinner's ready. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, like, the thing is, like, I foresee quality coming back. Mm -hmm. I foresee that quality is going to come back. Like, right mm -hmm. now, you know, like, there's this huge moment where, you know, like, everything needed to be normal. Everything needs to be done with your iPhone. Everything needs to be, people need to see like the way you sit down, the way you eat, the way what's in your plate, what's, you know, your dog, your this, your that, you know. And this is interesting moment because now like when you look at everybody's Instagram, you see everybody's stuck at home and you see everybody's in, inside their houses and you see the thing. And, and it's a bit boring, to be honest. You know, mm. it's, it gets a little bit, all right, okay, great. You two, you have a, a shelves. You two, you have books. You two, you have this, you have that. But like, I miss like big images and I miss like yeah. iconic things that when you see it, you go like, oh, wow, what is that? I, mm. I miss the dream, you know? And I think maybe it is time that things are going to be about dream again. It's going to be about like making mm. people dream and that the visuals, some people are going to put like at least the luxury brands, we have to put again quality into the work they do. Yeah, yeah. Because they, they, they've they've su they've been successful throughout all these years because of what they've built mm -hmm. through that 
throughout these years. Like, you know, like before when you had in the big moment of the magazines, when a brand like we call it Prada, Chanel, like any one of those brands doing the advertising campaign, you know, like they were putting so much effort into it. They were picking the best photographers, the best model, the best hair, the best makeup, more money, you know, like to make it exceptional. And then Instagram came along and people say, oh, I can do it with my iPhone. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. You can do it. It's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, you know, that kind of look is a little bit, um, it, it doesn't go very far. It doesn't bring, no. you know, a dream factor. It doesn't make you believe there's something that out there that is bigger than you and bigger than your life and that you want to believe in. You know, mm -hmm. and I think like, you know, when you, you see, then you see a, an Avdon picture and you go like, oh, you know, you get like, you know, you get taken, you know, and yeah. I think that's going to have to come back for the brands, for the luxury yeah. brands, you have to put efforts into their, their work. And you, you mm -hmm. see it already. You see like when Gucci, they do like those special campaigns on Instagram, they're really smart and really well done. You know, you see like pieces of film that are more intriguing, you, you know, see like, imagery that is more like polished, that is more saying something. You see messaging that is a little bit less like, you know, simplistic, you know? So I, I think I communication have to, 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 to get a little bit more of a, of a oomph. I was going to say, Fabian, how do you find, is it tough to find the, the personality for a brand, you know, the, the kind of the look and feel for, a brand because every brand you touch is so beautifully created, so beautifully executed. It is very but they, difficult, they're, but, but they're, it di is, they're different. It is difficult. It is. It is like uh, you know. It is finding the right words, the right colors, the right images, the right graphics, the right the right touch, the right emotion, the right feeling, the right you know. And it's a, the package of it all, and it's it's very very subtle the difference it's it's mm. it's always in the details yeah it's the minutia of moving something a little bit more here a little bit more there it's dialing it's mixing it's you know like and if you if there's a faux pas you feel it it doesn't and it, it's suddenly like that's not the brand that's not on brand and when something is not on brand you're not building you know the core, you know, you, you know that there's a DNA. There's there's a reason. You know, it's like a it's like a person. You got long hair, you got little short hair, you got blue eyes, you got brown eyes. It's the same thing. A brand ultimately is a personality, yeah. and a story, and like you know, like and and uh, and 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 a dream, and a thought, and, the, and, a, and, a, and a way of communicating, and certain words versus other words. You know, like uh, on and on and on and on. Do you get comfortable with the visibility of those brands that you work on? Because they're not just a, a local brand in a local market, kind of subtle in any ways. They're actually, they're always global, aren't they? They're always highly visible. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, like, you know, the communicating on the world uh, level is, is interesting because, like, you know, the Chinese market doesn't react the same way as the American market react as the European market, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes you have to adapt certain things for, for countries, which I think is very good. And it's interesting to learn about other things, other people, other ways of doing things and why this is working here and what this is wrong there, you know? And so you have to take, you have to have a good understanding of what's going on. Yes. But overall, I have to say, like, you know, you get attracted by a brand for what the glow is the glow around the brand that people get attracted to. Mm. What's your favorite font? Have you, have you got Baron and Baron fonts, like a, a family of fonts you guys work with? Yeah, all, all the fonts I use are fonts that are der derivative of, of uh, classic fonts. You know, and that I've redrawn to my specifications. So, so I've like Dido, I guess is a Dido you use from like, uh, Dido, like, that has been entirely redrawn. Um, mm -hmm. You know, like in you know, like um, I'd, usually the way I do fonts, I do them in like the old the old way, like you know, like 
like metal or wood, they had different sizes, you know? So like when I've, I want to use a big letter, I'm not using the one, the only one that is supposed to be small like that. I designed a specific alphabet for big letters. Okay. Yeah. So like they, they have, they, they, they drawn differently. They need more elegance because they're big. So you see everything. So when you see everything, you want to make sure, you know, like all the details are amazing. So there's a big size and there's a small size for text. And that one needs to be very legible. So mm. every like a uh, font that we designed, we have about three, four, five cuts per, you know, per font. Yeah. And what about, what's the makeup of your team? You said you got about 50 people there. Um, they're not obviously all designers, I presume. Is no, it, is it, no, no, no. There's a big art department. It's like we have like, um, you know, like creative directors, you know, and the, an art department with like, you know, like juniors, art directors, and like, you know, like designers and, and mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, uh, and smaller staff that does, does other things. You know, like, and then uh, we have a production department. That's the department that deals with all the shoots, sets up all all the um, all the shoots, and all has to do with like the scheduling of all the you know, like all the photography that we all the films. So it's a tremendous amount of work. You know, making sure like the films are all together, like the shoots are all together, like we get the right model, right photographers, right, the, you know, all the bookings, all the, you know, it's it's a headache and the scheduling. So that's the production department. We have a post-production department, which is dealing with, you know, anything that is proofing color, color correction, you know, anything that is, you know, like they printed this whole book, you know, like every proof has been mm. done now. So like everything is, you know, like uh, we have retouchers, you know, like uh, a whole post-production department. We could yeah. put out a magazine if we want there, a book, whatever you want. Um, Amazing. You know, we do the work of certain photographers, you know, we do the work of, you know, like when we have like a, an, an advertising job, you know, like the photographer runs the proofs through our office. So we, we're there, we can go quick. So it's really easy to, to have that in-house allows like, speed you know and quick delivery and uh, quality control you know so then we have on, oh sorry keep going then we have a film department that is only dealing with like we have editors so we have like a bunch of editors um and we have like a you know like a a, um, a film department that deals you know with anything that has to do with film you know that every all the post-production that need if we need to get out like go on special effects and get like anything you know we have like a post-production coordinator like a head of the department that deals with everything that has to do with film music film like editing like you name it that has to do only with film um then we have like you know my little department which is brian <laughs> brian and his team mm -hmm. um we have a digital department which is like you know like um programmers and we have you know like uh people that deals only like with the digital anything digital like from instagram to like anything that has to do with digital website building blah 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 blah. we have accounting and we have like you know managing and mm -hmm. account and we have account um account managers you know department yeah so like yeah. people that are really dealing with the client, making sure everything's on time, everything's on schedule. We run a tight ship, and then it's really like um, and it really like, everybody's really on it, and it's it, it took me a long time to get there, and it's 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 really good, it's really good. I'm very happy with it. We can do anything Fantastic. quickly Fantastic. and really well. I think it's when, good. When when you're doing magazines, uh, Fabian, are you now doing them from your studio, or do you go into the publication still? Uh, I'm not doing magazines at the moment. The last magazine I did was interview. Actually, no, that's not true because we're doing Dior magazine. <laughs> Dior is coming out with a magazine, you know, once in yeah. a while. So we, we do that. We produce oh, stuff. Cool. Yeah, so we do all the shoots and all the, you know, like all the layouts. We put it together, yeah. And that's done like it's part of like one of the things we do for that client, for Dior. You know when you're doing the, the fragrance uh 
bottles. Do you do you design the physical shapes or do you work with product designers? We have oh forgot with packaging department. No, oh, I forgot that. Department. Yeah, yeah, totally forgot. Totally forgot. We have a team dedicated to packaging, and you know, with the head of the of the department and designers, and they design mm-hmm. things. I used mm-hmm. to do a lot myself. I design so much by myself. You know, like mm-hmm. things like in Illustrator, like you know, little drawings, and you know, and after doing like you know the three dimensional drawings, um, but now like you know, like I have a department just for that. Fantastic. And they all work together. They all like mix and combine yeah. ideas. What is very good is like you have a creative director working on the client and that client as, you know, um, that client as packaging, fashion, advertising. That's getting louder and louder. Yeah, that's some, <laughs> someone, Brian is texting. Texting. Yeah, Brian, get off the bloody podcast. Get off the uh, webinar. <laughs> um, so, you know, like, so the creative director is involved himself into packaging, photography, shoots, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's kind of fun. Like, so all the departments, they mix really well. And mm-hmm. we have another department that deals with, like, you know, we're doing a lot of um, hotels, you know, and real estate advertising mm-hmm. you know, yeah. because we worked with Jan Schrager for the longest time, you know, yeah. like more than 25 years. Uh, so we, we do a lot of things for him and like, you know, like buildings in New York, like they want like thing, you know, like, so we, we do a lot of that. And then, and then, but you know, like this company wouldn't exist without one person though. And that person is Lisa. And Lisa is really my partner from the beginning, like almost from the beginning, a year or two after I started. And, you know, she she's the one who, who put the team together. She's the one who, like, you know, behind my craziness is making sense of, sense of everything. She's like, wow. she's the one with the head on the shoulder that makes sure everything is done and that takes me out of the, burning fires all the time and and makes this whole thing and turn this office my office into really a, a family i mean she's 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 the one that everyone everyone like you know everyone goes to lisa you know she's Absolutely. like does she manage the studio and i go to lisa too i have to say you know she's like uh she's the heart and soul of the company wow yeah everybody needs everybody needs one of those and she's so humble you know, she's so humble. It's never her. No, no, no. It's she always put herself, you know, in the background, and and she's the one that you know drives the whole thing. I mean, she obviously knows you really well. Um, I yeah. mean, it's it oh, oh yeah, she stressful. does. We we have the same age. We're exactly the same. She's a little bit older than me, which is a joke in the office because I, when her birthday comes, she's always a bit older than me. So I really like it. You know, so. I was <laughs> Hey, there's a pair of your glasses. Are those what you're wearing now? Are you wearing? Actually, they are. Glasses? Yeah, these are the sun version, but these are the yeah. These these are the glasses. Amazing. Yeah, they look good on you. The box Thank you. Bloody good too. Mine are a cheap two hundred dollar pair from uh, a local store. <laughs> <laughs> Which similar <laughs> shape, but anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very similar. I, I just wanted to find uh, tribes. Yeah, this is a tribe uh, book, which well, that came out probably twenty years ago or so, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I bought, I bought it's that. I remember Japanese buying that in um, London. This um, Japanese photographer came came to the office. He said, "I want to show you some pictures." I want to. Show. I come. He barely spoke English. He had like three forwards. He came with like someone to translate for him, and he showed me like a couple of these pictures. And I, I looked at them and I was like, wow, these are good. So these mm. are good. So oh, maybe I want to do a book. I want to do a book. Uh, what do you think? Like, you know, like, do you think it's a good idea if I do a book? And uh, he didn't have a lot of pictures by then. I said, like, I think it's a great idea to do a book, but you have to go back and do way more. And mm. when you finish with it, come back and I'll design the book. So I, I did the book for him, you know, because I like the pictures. Um, and uh, I, 
he's good that guy really what's he simple. doing now a, i i don't know exactly but i haven't seen him in a long time but i love this i love his book yeah can we talk about your film because you now you now oh there's your it's a Miyake bottle beautiful yeah iconic. that's it that's Miyake bottle yeah you have um, been paint shop Let's talk about your film, because I mean, filming, you're directing. Um, are you directing that's a, all the? That's another passion of mine. You know, I've been yeah. doing commercials for more than twenty-five years. Mm -hmm. So, but people don't really know that. But I've done film like for a long, 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 long time, and I've done a lot of commercials. I must have done like five hundred commercials. You know, wow. so. Um, I've, I've, I've big reel. I mean, they all like thirties or sixties or one minute, two minutes, three minutes, nothing long, but you know, like, um, I, I, I've sharpened my tools in filmmaking mm -hmm. in five years and I've learned and I've, you know, and I've, and I've, you know, uh, I, I became better. I mean, it's, it's, I think film is the, the one medium where I feel, um, I can mix all the things I learned in one in one place. Yeah. Because it takes everything. There's there's it, you know like there's design in it, there's like art direction in it, there is like uh, acting, there is like uh, you know movement, there is like photography, there is like uh, there's everything. There's architecture, there's design, there's like a set building, there's sound, there's you know there's special effects. There's so many layers. And and it's something I'm I'm totally passionate about, and I love film. I love film. And what I love the most about it, because I'm kind of a control freak about things, the way they look and how to make, to do things. What I love the most about, about film is like, you, it, it requires so much planning, so much organization, and so much, you have to know what you're doing when you're doing it. Because mm -hmm. there's, no, there's no room for error, because everything is really expensive. And mm -hmm. so you have to know what you're doing, what you want, and you, and you have a, a team of like some, you know, like I had crews, I don't know, like 200 people crew, you know, uh, to do some commercials, like, you know, and some of them cost like three, four million dollars. Um, wow. So, but the beauty of it, the beauty of it is like, it, there's so many layers that basically you spend your time controlling everything perfectly well. And then you say action and you roll the film and all that control is gone. It is up, it's all those things that you've set up are in motion on their own. Wow. And they become something else. And it's, it's the most like a thing that I'm surprised about film is that you have something very precise in your head and you know exactly the way you're going to do it. And everybody's on par with it. And everybody's mm. doing it. And we are the, 200 people that right, set up like doing the thing. Mm -hmm. And you roll and it's something else. And that's wow. amazing. And that's really, really something I love about it. Because like, you know, like you so much in control and you lose control. And then, you know, it's the, it, it's that moment that is like pure, energy and and it's it's an amazing feeling it's an amazing feeling and and i love it for that have you done and a feature the, film in the middle of that when you throw mm -hmm. acting in the middle of that it becomes really exceptional and you can like you know and because like you know if you use sound you cannot talk you can't say anything you know like so you roll it's full sil silence and like you know the thing is just in front of you happening and like mm, you cannot really say you have to let the thing happen and mm. I love that, that controlling to not control. I, I like that, that. And for me, this is this idea of like, you know, living this chaotic life and, you know, but in a very orderly way. Mm -hmm. So that's the way I think I lead, you know, and I've done, I, I lead my life. Would you, you know? do a feature? Would you do a feature film, Fabian? I'm working on it. Ah, cool. Let's talk about let's talk about the Madonna sex book because um, someone stole mine and I want it back. So anyone watching this, I want it back. You no, know I don't even know. I've I've won. I'm not sure. You Maybe got, you Brian. Got one? Brian. Yeah. 
But like, you know, like I had like, you know, early on, I had like number four or five, something like that. I don't think that one I have anymore. Okay. Someone stole yours as well. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is quite a thing when this came out. Um, yeah, it probably. was. I mean, like, you know, like, um, <laughs> interesting to see this now today. Like, I mean, this is like, I don't know, many years old now. But um, I think at the time, like, I think where she was, as is, I think she was at the top of a game. And um, I think there's a lot of things she could do that, that she could push buttons in a period where, like, where bu button could be pushed as well. You know, and mm. she was a big button pusher. So she really wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. It's it's really a reflection of of what she's about or what she was about at the time. And you know, I mean she did it like for you know, like for the shocking value, she did it for like this idea of yeah, you know, I think behind it it was really for women she did that. This idea mm. that a woman could do something like that. That a mm. woman charge and like you know because if you read everything she's she's talking about is it's quite you know about you know like this idea of liberating li liberating women you know mm -hmm. so that that i really appreciate you know and i really i really like that i mean and she did in like you know some images in <laughs> these are quite shocking and she wanted to push buttons and and be, and be very playful with it um, is that you on the left no, that's not me on the left, man. All right. Like, oh, okay. No, All right. No, no. Well, yeah, same air do, but like you know, <laughs> I don't have that tattoo on the side, you know. Yeah. So I mean, Madonna is someone I've worked a lot with, like through the years, and like she's she's done, you know, she's been on every magazine I worked for, like from on the cover of Opera's Bazaar, Italian Vogue, French Vogue, Interview Magazine, a couple of times, you know. So all the magazine I've been at, she's she's been at throughout the years. Um, we haven't seen each other for a while. Um, I think last time I saw her, like, was a couple of years back at her birthday. You know, she always throws like an amazing birthday party. Um, wow. she's, she's, she's quite a character. Mm. She's quite a character. I think she's, she's like, yeah, I think like, uh, when you talk one on one on her, she's super smart. She's mm -hmm. super smart. Uh, she likes to provoke, obviously. We know that. Um, well, she's she's a great girl. Like you her. Must know, you must know so many incredible people um, through our well, interview. Uh, interview was like a, a good place because I, 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 I was lucky to meet a lot of actors, a lot of like artists, a lot of different people, and it's nice to hear what they have to say. And were, you the were you the editor? On interview, I was the editor, yeah, for ten years, and, yeah, and creative director. Yes, mm -hmm. wow, so I was designing the magazine, but I was all, also the editor in chief, yeah, in a way, yeah, the, was that, the editorial director, yeah. So was that your full uh, first time role in that kind of complete control of the vision? Second time, my first time was Arena and Plus, oh, where okay. I was the chief, and then uh, interview, I was the editorial director. So it was like, yeah, I was the top guy at interview and I on plus. Was and it, other magazines, easy? I was the, the creative director. I was like in charge mm -hmm. of the visuals. I wonder if it was, is it easier when you're the editor as well or harder? Um, I think it's easier. Mm. I think it's much easier because it's, you know, like it's about your vision and surrounding yourself with the people that you believe in and that you, you, you know, like that helped you put the magazine together. This cover there is interesting. The one before, Irene yeah. Amplus, Justin Timberlake. This came out, this issue came out September 11, 2001 on a newsstand. It was quite like, oof. Oh, so yeah. never, well, just by chance. I thought at the time, because at that time, in 2001, Justin was like really the kid on the block. Yeah. There's an American flag, everything's burnt, he's bloody, and he came out on September 11, 2001. Wow. 
What a so the, 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 you know, like picture by Stephen Klein, um, the cover was pulled from the newsstand in America because of like, be, yeah, people felt like it was yeah, the wrong bad taste. Movie. Yeah. And, um, it was replaced by another cover. So we had to reprint, but the few that were already on the stand, like a few people got that, that, that cover. And now it sits in the museum for, for what it meant in that moment in the culture, you know? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Interesting story. Yeah. I mean, just, just a question. And then look, what it says. Like, look at the title. Eat me, baby, one more time. Wow. <laughs> that is bizarre, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what? There's a moment in time now with obviously the pandemic and that's going on, and a lot of people are asking what should businesses be doing because people have kind of going, you know, people have retracted. They're reflecting. Uh, they're rethinking um, their businesses, their lives. What would your advice be in this moment? For businesses? Yeah. I'd say go back to the source. Go, go back to the basics. Go back to what you were here, f you were here for the first time, the, the first place. You know, mm -hmm. I, think, I think that's what, that's what I would say. I think it's impo important to reconnect with your history and for the, the good reason why people liked you the first place. Mm -hmm. and not try to cover up some kind of holes because you missed like three months of business or this or that and try to invent like some new thing and like catch up. You don't need to mm -hmm. catch up with anything. You just turn your back, go back to the source and, you know, and learn from that again and, you know, go forward with that in a very genuine and, and true way. That would be I'm my and what about in the kind of the higher end fashion world? Because obviously um, clothes, I mean, sorry, people have been buying less during this time. Um, do yes. you think that that will come back? And people are well, also linked with climate change climate as well, climate change exactly. affected. Well, it's not like a lot of people are going out, right? No. It's not like nobody needs to go to get a dress to go to a party. So like, I mean, and everybody's like, it's not true actually. A lot of like, you know, like sweatpants, like, you know, streetwear, like certain streetwear, anything mm. sweatpants, like a zip up thing, like, you know, like mom pajamas, everything. The sales are going crazy mm. because that's what people are. People are home and, the, you know, and they're, just, they're chilling. Mm. And they're on the computer what? and their phone and they're doing a lot of social media, right? What's your it's view? Too many what's, your view? what's your view, Fabian, on. Um, you know, the future, I mean, a lot, of, a lot of AI is making a big kind of entrance into our lives. Um, how do you think it's going to affect us and certainly in the kind of design field? Well, uh, you know, there's bad things about it and there's got to be good things about it. You know, the, when we're going to learn to be extremely creative with it, we'll find our own ways to, to deal with it in a really good way. It's going to be interesting. New tool. Great. I'm for new tools. New tools, new, new more fun. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's a good answer. Um, we're going to, um, and there's so much incredible work and I'd highly recommend anyone uh, to, to, to buy the book. Um, and it's, it's a true inspiration and, and I love the way that you group the imagery um, and the, and the work, et cetera. Um, Thank you. And it's been uh, so cool. We haven't been able to answer all the questions, but what we're going to do is, is wrap it up now. Um, I absolutely want to thank you for making your time today, Fabian. Um, Sorry, I, I think... couldn't hear that at the beginning. No, oh, that was our fault. We're going to do Zoom next time. <laughs> uh, um, who knows? It, it's quite it's quite unpredictable. But what, what's amazing is the the opportunity for us to be able to have. We still got 190 people on here, so we've gone an hour and a half. Uh, we've gone half an hour beyond. Um, We've got people all over the world listening in and, and watching. Um, I find, you know, from the days before that I remember of not having a computer to, to today, it's just quite incredible change, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That we're able to kind of share. I mean, I've, I've said to everyone, you know, like at the office, can you imagine this pandemic 10 years ago? Oh, nah, it'd be impossible, yeah, it would, wouldn't it? It would have been 
really in trouble. Or fax you or, or something, you know what? I was able to edit film, to do color correction, to do everything with the computer. Mm. That's incredible. And, you know, like incredible. We were able to continue working. Ten years ago, forget it. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just it's such a such a change. Um be interesting to see how, how it all looks like in the next few years in terms of how we kind of adapt to this or change. Uh, we all are in some form. I'm scared, like, you know, people forget and go back to, uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah. I do want to thank, I do want to thank um, uh, Brian, <laughs> your, your, uh, your incredible assistant for helping make this happen. Uh, Brian Hillington. Um, I want to thank my team, Mac, uh, Luca, uh, Hugo, and Connie, uh, for making this happen from my side. It's been um, it's been a lot of preparation, uh, certainly well worth it. And uh, I think that's going to be um, it's really cool to kind of get to know you and hear how you how you think. One thing is looking at the work that's produced, um, even in a book. A book is pretty in incredible, but it's not to actually hear from the the, the person. Um, their perspective on life, what drives them, their inspiration, how how did things evolve, you know? And it's been a real a real eye opener and a really kind of a, a real pri privilege to hear kind of behind the scenes of Fabian Baron. And um, yeah, really cool spending some time with you. So thank you so much. Well, I thank you very much for having me. And uh, cool. I wish everyone in Australia like you know, best time. Thank you, my friend, and you, and and the rest of the world, um, and kind of um, in these tough times that we are going through at the moment. Okay, great. Um, all right, thank you, guys. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. Bye, bye.